you don't have to. And as long as you think you have to, you're not going to do it. Mm. You're only going to do it if you want to do it, because look at how many things you're doing because you want to do them, which you did because it was enjoyable. So the only way that you should construct things for yourself to do is things that you enjoy or you find a way to enjoy it or find a way to do it in a way that's more enjoyable because anything that you force yourself to do by telling yourself you should do it, you have to do it, you must do it, there's going to be another part of you that naturally opposes it and self-sabotages and procrastinates because it creates an oppositional energy because your number one value is freedom. So mm -hmm. we have a need for autonomy. And even if we're the ones who are trying to force ourselves to do something and execute on a task or a project that we know we need to get done, we're going to oppose ourselves because we're not one self. We're a multiplicity of cells. We have, we're a psychological system made up of subsystems. And these subsystems need to be aligned in terms of their motivations, values, and core desires. And when those things are aligned, we experience alignment as a whole and we experience more flow and there's less, you know, one step forward, two steps back and self-sabotage and, you know, self-doubt and procrastination and all that stuff. But to make sure all of these subparts are aligned, we cannot have them be in opposition. So this language of I have to do this, I should do this, I must do this, it creates up oppositional relationships between our subparts, mm -hmm. which ends up being very suboptimal when it comes to business. This is the season you're in, right? And so we have to understand what that season is. And then we have to respect that season and your needs during that season. And in this season, your number one need is autonomy. So if we don't honor that, then things are not going to work so well because your number one need right now is autonomy. Right. So the more we build things around developmentally where you are right now, where you are developmentally is your individuating. This typically happens ideally when we're young, but most people don't experience the kind of relational environment when they're young for all of the sequencing of their development to happen at the right time. Okay. So a lot of us, we end up stepping into and co-creating very codependent adult relationships where we lose our independence, where we lose our individuality, we lose our autonomy, and then we basically regress back into a childhood state of basically being a child who's, you know, very dependent on the parents, on the caregivers. So we do this so that we can actually push away and individuate. So those adult relationships invariably come to an end because we need to push away to fully complete the unresolved developmental sequence of pushing away from our parents and fully individuating and becoming, you know, an actual individual human being. And that's, this is how healthy ego structures and psychological systems develop. So you have to push away from all that stuff to fully come to know yourself. And that's why the stage you're now in is individuation. And so you're going to be in that place when it comes to the business as well. You're going to be allergic to being codependent with the business. You're going to be allergic to having something on your plate that you have to do every week or every day. Because it's going to trigger feelings of being trapped, not being free, not having your autonomy. Mm -hmm. And you're going to rebel against that. Really, you're rebelling against yourself. But actually, what's happening is that you're in a developmental stage where your need for autonomy is much greater than your need for connection. That's what individuation feels like. Mm -hmm. so we don't just individuate from people in relationships. We also individuate from other geometries like Sometimes it's friends, sometimes it's businesses, sometimes people individuate from places. It's like, I have I grew up here, I lived here my whole life. I need to know who the fuck I am, you know, without all this, outside of all this. And this can happen at various points in life. But it's important for us to understand this because 
what's happening is not what's actually happening. You know, on the face of it, it's like, why am I so avoidant about sending these emails every day? Like, it's such a silly thing. Right. But when we actually understand the deeper underlying process that our system is going through, that there are some developmental stages that we're progressing through and, oh, actually this stage looks like this and my needs are different in this stage than the previous stage and my values are different, my desires are different, my boundaries are different, then we can actually get more precise and we can navigate the stage in a more optimal way because if we can honor those needs, if we can honor your values around autonomy, freedom, independence, then we can actually get more of the right things done with less of a fight. There's just way less resistance we have to brute force through and we experience more flow. So remember your whole thing around needing something to push against? Yes. So if someone has that where they need something to push against, guess what they're going to create wherever they go. So there's an addiction to having something to push against, some problem to solve, something that you just can't figure out that's frustrating you. Because it's like you would lose contact with yourself if you're not pushing against something. So there is an avoidance of the direct path to solving those problems. So there's an addiction to having the problem because it gives, it's like having something to chew on. We want to build from the level of ease and flow and abundance we want. Not from the problem and pushing against something or stuff like that, right? 